Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good to have you on the phone, whoever you might be this morning, this beautiful day the Lord has made. If you are um, on Facebook Live and can be on Facebook Live, uh, let me know that. Uh, I'm starting a little early. Oh, I do. I think we got some folks coming through. All right now. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Yeah, I woke up. Listen, I got to be respectful in my house because I'm up at 530 in the morning. Right. And, um, uh, something starts to rise up in the morning. And I start to I want to just give them praise. I just do. 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 Cough, because he's worthy of praise. Good morning, everyone who's coming on Facebook Live. So glad that we were able to connect the first time this morning. Good, good morning, Brother Elder. Good to have you. Good morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we're going to get, get, this, get this party started over here also on Periscope. Coming in a little early this morning. And um, it's going to be powerful. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to put you folks on um, mute that are on the phone, okay? So um, you can cut back on some of the static and the noise, background noise, that is. Good morning, everyone. Hallelujah. Man, I'm so excited. But I've, I'm committing myself to finish by 7 o'clock, all right, um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, namely, i got to get to the gym, right? Um, lady and I get to, got to get that workout in. Um, but 6.37, we're going to share these thoughts and um, you know, keep, keep, keep rolling, all right? Hallelujah. Oh, <sighs> so excited. All right, here we go. All participants are muted, hey. and they can unmute themselves. Good morning, Chief Psalmist. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Uh, let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege again to rise with the sun and to give you praise. We bring you the morning sacrifice of praise. Um, but reality is that we're being selfish in that regard. We know as we worship you, we can sense your presence even more. And your presence is the fullness of joy. Thank you for this privilege. And those that are coming on and watching and hearing and listening, Father, may there be an impartation in their hearts as well as mine today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being on um, Morning Decrees. Morning Decrees, uh, number 23. Um, my original intent was to uh, finish the decrees with, as we finished our uh, corporate fast. And um, I just feel that God is still pouring oil. Uh, that's 2 Kings chapter 4, where the widow, the uh, widow, single parent widow, no less, um, found herself in debt. Yes, number 22, thank you, sir. Uh, found herself in debt. And um, she came to the prophet and said, My husband, your servant, died, and the creditors have come to take my sons um, into um, the debtor's prison, essentially. And um, essentially, he said, Listen, I want you to go do something, and told her to go borrow empty vessels, not quite empty, but an empty vessel, and come back, um, go into your house, and pour the little bit of oil that you have into uh, the oil. Hey, brother. Um, and um, she kept pouring. And she kept pouring until there was no more, um, no more um, vessels. And so um, I, I, feel, I feel God is waking me up with a word each morning um, with that thought in mind that we need to keep pouring. And so let's pour and let's receive together. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Whew. Turn with me, please, to um, the gospel according to Luke chapter 17. Our decree this morning, our confession, confession this morning, is that our praise, or my praise, your praise, my praise releases power. My praise releases power. I want to take worship, if you will, I want to take praise out of the church context just for a moment. And um, uh, uh, just for a moment and uh, bring it home, bring it personally, bring it to where we need to be, and um, so we can really um, make it work. Our worship team, our, our worship team particularly, is, um, you know, profound, um, they are proficient, uh, they are excellent, 
And as a saw, as a sad story, we have a tendency then to rely on others in order to uh, do our worship and our praise for us. And so part of our decree and our de confessions needs to involve thanksgiving to God. But let's look at this story here for a moment, Luke chapter chapter 17, and I think it'll help us with this. Again, my praise releases power. The Bible says, on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he uh, entered a village, he saw or met 10 lepers. Let me pause here for a moment. I just read verse 11 um, a little while ago, and it absolutely blew my mind. Hear the word of the Lord. You see, you, listen, listen, <laughs> you got to, you got to go through to get through. Are you hearing me? You got to, you have to go through to get through. Many times we're in the middle of something and we're cursing um, the process that we're in. But if we will go through, we'll get through. Keep in mind, you're going to get somewhere, but you got to go through in order to get through. Many of us, not many of us, all of us are in the middle of something in which we prefer not to be in. But I'm here to tell you, your, your thanksgiving, your worship will expedite that process as you go through. But you got to go through to get through. All right? So just go ahead and through it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Doesn't mean I'm going to die in the valley. It's mean I'm going through the valley. Come on, amen. You have to go through a valley to get to your mountaintop, your next peak. So sometimes the road can be a little like this. Just because there's some dips in it doesn't mean you're going to die in the dip. Keep on rolling, all right? <laughs> Just thought I'd share that with you. Um, as he entered a village... He was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, have mercy on us. Now, if you've been around the church a number of years, you've heard this particular um, biblical story before. I ask you to suspend perhaps your judgment and allow God to speak to you afresh this morning. That be okay, and so so here are these lepers, um, and again leprosy was uh, contagious. Um, it uh, there's leper colonies still today on the planet, and um, lepers were required by law to stay I think a hundred paces away from public, and if they came near anyone, they would have to announce unclean, unclean, unclean. Can you imagine being in a condition where you have to tell everybody every time you're around them? I've got this dreaded disease. Isn't that horrible? Unclean, unclean, unclean. Can you imagine the self-esteem issue? Can you imagine the, the emotional um, degradation um, and defilement that they put themselves to every day? Can you imagine people sneering at them, looking at them, pointing at them? Perhaps you felt that way in your own life. You've gone through different things and you really felt every time you showed up somewhere, somebody was saying something and talking about you or pointing their finger at you. I do know that feeling. And in this case, these guys had to stay at a distance and they said they had to cry out, unclean, unclean, unclean. And so we're in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. And in this situation, they stood at a distance, verse 13 says, 12 says, and they lifted up their voices. Here we go. Lift up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now hear this, family. Hear this. There comes a point. That, uh, this is, is real, right? It, it's just us talking, right? Just us talking. It comes a point where, where there, there are times when there is no other prayer to pray other than that of a prayer of mercy. Mercy, mercy is a prayer that says, I may not deserve what I'm asking, but I want you to give something to me despite me. Just, you know, regardless of where I'm at, I need you to do something for me. I don't have what it takes right now to get it. I don't have what it takes to buy it. I don't have enough time, energy, connections, hooks up, hookups in order to somebody. Sounds like my man, the blind beggar, right? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. God, mercy. I don't know how to put a theological prayer together that's going to make any sense. I don't have enough energy to do it. Don't have time to do it. 
not enough psychologists to do it. I'm not enough lawyers to do it. Not enough money to do it. God, I need mercy in this situation. I need you to step in to my situation. I need you to step in to the to the charred uh, fr uh, fragments of my situation, and I need you to do something. Now, the cry of mercy really comes out of a covenant plea. It comes out of the loving kindness, tender mercies of God, the Hasid agape of God, the, the loving kindness, tender mercy of God, that God is a merciful God. Come on, now, he's a merciful God. But you, you and I have to open our mouths sometimes and say, God, I need mercy. Hallelujah. God, I need mercy. I need mercy. And so they said, Master Jesus, have mercy on us. And listen, <laughs> look, at this, look at this, look at this, verse 14. When he saw them, the lepers, he said to them, wait, pause. Now, Jesus was not even in the leper healing business that day. That, as far as we know, was not even on his, his natural agenda. That was not on his schedule. Do you know that there are examples in the scriptures that, that it appears that Jesus' schedule was altered by the cry or the faith of individuals? Listen, you may not think that you're on God's mind right now, but if you'll begin to open your mouth and cry out to God, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be written into that agenda, in that schedule. You can actually, you can actually help schedule your miracle and your breakthrough. Yeah, I know, I know. Brother, God's sovereign. Yes, but apparently he responds to the cry of faith. Apparently he responds to the cry of desperate, hungry people. He doesn't, he doesn't respond to need because these lepers had needs. He responds to the cry that comes out of a heart of an individual. I'm here to tell you, family, it's time, it's way past time to be cute. We need to be, we need to be about, we need to be about opening up our mouth and declaring, God, you are a merciful God. Jesus, have mercy. Hallelujah. That's what my mother would always say. She said, have mercy, have mercy, right? Jesus, have mercy. Hallelujah. And he'll have mercy. He's having mercy. He sent Jesus, which is merciful. Glory to God. Now, now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at verse 14. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves. I can't even get past that verse. Hey, family, check this out. Jesus is a, he's just chilling, rolling through the village. Hey, I'm on my way to Jerusalem. I'm on my way to the, to the city of peace. I got to pass between Samaria and Galilee. I'm going, I'm going through the hood. He's rolling. He wasn't, how you say, he wasn't studying these, these lepers until they opened their mouth. Some of us think, I don't know what it is. We just think that God, he knows where we are, but he's waiting for us to say, hey, this is my latitude and my longitude. This is the pinpoint where I'm at in my life. You nine need to open our mouth, say, God, this is where I am right now. This is where I am right now. And as we begin to worship him, something begins to happen. Hallelujah. And look, look what he says in verse 14. Look what he says. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. Now, if you and I didn't know our biblical, our history here, we would think Jesus was being very indifferent to them. He didn't come over to them. He never conferenced with them. He didn't break out the oil. He didn't lay hands on them. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't do an abracadabra on them. He simply said, go and show yourselves to the priest. Now, now, now that was, that was code for, you already got the thing you've been crying out for. That's code. Because in the, in the law, in the Levitical law, it says that if you are healed as a leper, you need to go to the priest and the priest will declare you healed, right? They would examine you and they would declare you healed, right? So when they, when they said, when he said that to them, Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, when they, when he said, go your, show yourselves to the priest, they knew they got it. Are you hearing me? But check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. There was no evidence in that exact moment that they were going to have the thing that they were begging God for. You see, you see, you see, your obedience, my obedience, releases God's overflow, right? Our obedience releases the miracle. 
We want the miracle and then we want to obey. It doesn't work that way. Our obedience releases the miracle. Are you hearing me, right? Right? What does Corinthians tell us? It says that when our obedience is complete, disobedience will be punished. In other words, do your part and let God do his part. Come on, that's got to be that's got to be like the second or third book coming out, right? The miracle of movement. Our obedience releases God's miracle power. It releases that thing. Man, right in there. It's got that miracle in. There's acts of obedience right now. There's acts of obedience right now that you can take to begin to release something supernatural in your life. Something supernatural can be released in your life this morning if you will take an act or a step of obedience, a directive of God. So they, he said, go and show, go and show, go and show yourself to the priest. And look at this next part. It says, and as they went, they were cleansed. I got a question for you this morning. The question is, have they not gone or started walking toward the priests? Would they have experienced healing? I'd have to say the answer to that would be no. Because obedience is the door. You must walk through the door of obedience to experience your next level. And so in this situation, the Bible says, as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, we need to give God thanks for that. As they went, they were cleansed. Family, hear me now. This is where we got to grow up. Can I, can I say that? So we got to grow up in our spirit situation because, because they're, I mean, I, I, my sense is that many are facing situations that are pretty serious, pretty heavy stuff. And you can going to be beat down by your situation. Be down by the fact that nothing has changed. Be down by the circumstances. Be down that the fact that it got worse since last week. Be down with the fact that negativity is all up in your head, all up in your ears. Be down, be down, be down. And you can get tired of the fight. Come on, talk to me, right? You can get tired of the fight. Pain and fatigue can make a coward of us all. Get tired of the fight. Simply tired. Simply tired of the fight, right? This is what we got to grow up. 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 Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Now, 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 whatever it is that you're being directed to do, and it's usually not a major, major, major big deal. Whatever it is you're directed to do or you have neglected to do, start making that movement and God releases something in you. Now, our decree, our decree is my praise releases power. We're going to get there, but family, we got to get this thing together. Come on, dry them tears and make movement. Hallelujah. Dry those tears and make movement. Your praise, your thanksgiving releases power. I'm not talking about it's one thing to say it and do it in church. We've got great churches. We've got great worships, worship teams, music ministries. You come from that. Many of you musicians and singers. But I'm talking about in the dark hour of life. In the dark hour of life, can you worship? Can you raise your hands? Come on, amen. Can you say, God, I give you thanks. So here we go. Luke chapter 17, 11 through 14, Jesus cleansed these 10 lepers. Now look at this, please. Here we, here we go. He said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. I can't get off of that. As they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. As we obey, it happens. As we obey, it happens. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were cleansed. So that's cool, right? That's cool. They... The, the cleansing part means that the destructive force of leprosy was retarded. It was no longer active. The flesh-eating disease was stopped right there. Healed of the leprosy. In other words, you're still missing limbs, still missing fingers, but clearly, no more activity. They realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, right? And that's awesome, man. That's awesome. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm down with that. We ought, we ought to be happy about that. But look at this. Verse 15 says, then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. Jesus told this guy, go show yourself to the priest. 
Meaning you already got healed. So go go show yourself to the to the priest, dude. I you, your cry of mercy released something into you already, so you can go show yourself to the priest because he's gonna co-sign what I already signed. But he God turns back, man. He turns back and and the Bible says, praising God with a loud voice. Oh, oh can I? <laughs> don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me this morning. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. But the Lord Jesus Christ has already done such absolutely miraculous things in every one of our lives. We should go into heaven with absolute reckless abandonment of thanksgiving if he did another thing. Absolute reckless about, I mean, absolute out of our mind praising God. I mean, just like, are you kidding me? I mean, are you hearing what I'm talking about? And I'm telling you, yes, stuff undone, stuff not right, stuff upside down. But to this day and point, come on now, come on now. We should be talking back to one another saying the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks. You hear what I'm talking about? Off key, on key, no key. We ought to be worshiping him just because of what he's already done. Already done. Already. Listen, had God not touched some of you, you wouldn't be on this Periscope Facebook Live or on the phone this morning. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You'd still be out of your mind. You'd still be in a corner somewhere on an intravenous, on the intravenous Zoloft drip. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? I'm talking about myself right now. If God hadn't touched you, if God hadn't heard the cry of your heart, if God hadn't interpreted your breathing, if God hadn't took taken your tears and put them in a bottle as a memorial to you, to him, according to the psalmist, you and I wouldn't be here today. So listen, we got a reason to give God thanks. But this leper, man, he, he checked himself. Said, well, I mean, he, uh, wait, 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 wait. He said, he said, he said, he said, I should give God thanks. And look, look at this, look at this. Don't tell me it doesn't matter because it most certainly does. You ought to be giving God thanks right where you are, at the kitchen, in your car, on your drive right now. You ought to be giving God thanks right now, right? Look at this, verse 15. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. My God, this leper went off. And verse 16 says, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet. Oh. oh, he fell on his face. Listen, God is about to drop some miracles in you. And I'm here to tell your family, you need to give him some praise. Come on now. But listen, it, it gets gooder. There's another word for us. It gets gooder here. Fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now look at these next six words, five words. Now he was a Samaritan. We, we, we can't we can't just excuse that. We can't just let that go. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said. These Samaritans, may I, may I, may I, may I, may I, may I make this statement? I'm just going to tell you what the commentaries say, that they were half-breed Jews. In other words, they were half-baked. They were, their theologies was off. They did some kind of, historically, some really off stuff in the name of God. The Jews and Samaritans had no dealings together. They were not, they were kind of on the outside. They weren't really the down crew. They weren't really the Jew-Jew, you know what I mean? So, so, these Samaritans, so Jesus said, now this guy isn't even somebody who we would normally think gets it, but he got it. There are some of you that are listening right now. You're not even all the way saved. You're not even all the way sanctified. You're still doing some pretty dumb stuff that you know is wrong. Come on, talk to me, right? You got some stuff. Your heart is right. You learned how to walk in the righteousness factor yet. I'm here to tell you, Jesus is still going to heal you. Jesus is still going to bless you. Jesus is still going to bring you through. Why? Because it's the goodness of God that brings us to repentance. Now, he was a Samaritan. 
He was a Samaritan. Verse 17. Then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Don't tell me it doesn't matter. Don't, don't. Jesus, Jesus isn't, isn't aware of our, isn't aware of our praise. Jesus said, Jesus said, wait, wait, wait. Wasn't there 10? Wasn't there 10? As if to say there, there, there was an expectation on the part of the Lord Jesus that, that, that everyone who's been touched by him would give him thanks, give him, give him praise. I would argue with you this morning, if you would like to argue with me, I would argue with you this morning that one of the reasons why God does not or has not been able to release the greater glory is because we haven't been thankful for the former glory. One of the reasons why God has not been able to release the more is because we haven't been thankful for the less. We haven't been thankful for the last thing, right? Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Were not 10 cleansed. Luke 17, verse, verse 17. Wow, 17, verse 17. There's something in there. Where are the nine? I would argue with you this morning. I don't, maybe I should change that. I would challenge you this morning. Don't be the nine. Be the one. Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Verse 19 is what I've been working to get to all morning. And he said to him, rise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now, again, at first blush, we look at this and we just kind of dismiss it as if Jesus is saying, man, thanks for the worship. Thanks for the thanksgiving. Go enjoy being cleansed. He didn't use that word there. He didn't use that word there. He said, your faith has made you well or saved you. Family, hear this, hear this, hear this, hear this, hear this. He uses in other verses, cleanse, use, healed. But there he says saved. What's he talking about there? When he's talking about salvation or the verb to save or sozo, he's talking about the wholeness of God. This is what I believe. And I don't think I'm on good standing as I say this theologically speaking, that there was a restoration that occurred in this leper that the other nine did not receive. He said, rise, your faith has sowed so you, saved you, made you whole. In this moment in time, his fingers got restored. Don't tell me Jesus can't do that because he can. His sight got restored. Could have been glaucoma, could have been diabetes. Don't know what happened. His, his, his ears that fell off were put back together. Don't tell me he can't do that because you'll wake up tomorrow morning and God will put body parts in you that were taken out of you. Come on, talk to me, somebody. He said, rise and go. Your faith has made you whole, dude. Your faith has restored you. But what was his faith? What was his faith? What was his faith? His faith was in his, his, his worship. So Jesus says, Jesus equated his thanksgiving with his faith. Now this dude didn't come back to Jesus to say, listen, thanks for the cleansing, but I would like my, uh, my pinky finger back. He didn't say that. He just came back to give him thanks and God said, here's a bonus for you. I'm here to tell you right now, you are in the bonus section and the bonus plan of God in your life this morning. As you give God glory, God's going to say, and here's some more of that. 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 You didn't even pray about this, but I'm going to send it your way anyway. God has got some things that are going to knock on your door you're going to be happy about. God's going to drive up some things that you're going to be ecstatic about. You're going to get some phone calls. Why? Because of your thanksgiving, God's going to add a boom to your situation. Come on now. I can't take it. I cannot take it. Why? Because all we need to do is give him thanks for what he's already done. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. 
to the Holy One. Give thanks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give him thanks. Give him thanks that you can get up this morning and start walking. Give him thanks that you... Eternity. Give him thanks that you that you made it through the night and that the, the morning has come. Give him thanks that you're even on this Periscope and Facebook right now or on the phone. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. He said, rise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. What was his faith, man? His faith was demonstrated in his thanksgiving. And God had a bonus. I can't help but think about my kids, even, even other people. Even other, you can do something nice with somebody, man, and, they, and they're really appreciative of it. Don't you want to do more? Don't you just want to do more? Don't you say, I wish I could just do more? Come on, just do him more, right? Oh, oh, I just wish I could. Give him thanks with a grateful heart. Give him thanks. He is worthy. Amen. That's no organ. He had no organ. He had no choir. Uh, he had no worship team. He had no Hammond B3. He had no praise. Down. He had nothing. He had nothing. He had nothing. Except what God had already done for him. Give him thanks. 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 And watch him expand you. Hallelujah. Listen, my time is up. We're at the seven o'clock hour. Our confessions, our decrees are these statements that, that, are, that are authorized from heaven to legislate and bring things about in the earth. Amen. And so when you give God thanks, it releases power into your life. It just does. You cannot give God thanks and there not be a release of power. It is impossible. Because when you give God thanks, he releases his presence to manifest. And where his presence is, you're going to find power every day and twice on Sunday, right? Come on now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, listen, listen, we got to go. Let's make some decrees. In Jesus' name, I shall live and not a grateful heart. And God releases the bonus in my life. Come on, amen. I make that the correct declaration. I decree in Jesus' name that one weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment shall be shown to be in the wrong. I declare not one weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every plan and, and attack and, and, and set up by the enemy is exposed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I will not step on any spiritual IUDs today. I will walk in victory today. I'll walk in the favor of God because favor is for a lifetime. I thank you, Father, for opening doors, avenues of revenue. I declare in Jesus' name, we'll walk in power, walk in grace, walk in mercy. I declare that my body is healed from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet. I declare that every illness that's trying to attack my, attack my body is canceled in the name of Jesus. It's illegal. It cannot ride me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Speak to your situation. Don't pray about your mountain. Speak to your mountain. All right. Listen, some of you are going to some situations uh, today. I, I want you to get through this. Give God thanks and watch him do exceedingly abundantly above even more than you can ask or think in Jesus' name. Every malignancy is canceled in Jesus' name. Every cell in your body is going to pulsate with divine life. I speak that over you right now, whoever you might be. Walk in it. All right? Listen, got to go, got to go, got to go. Give God thanks. Have a great day. Why don't you share this with people? And please, would you do me a favor? Do me a favor. Please, if you could, um, in comment sections, um, testify as to, to, to the decree that's making a difference in your life. Let other people read it, and it'll encourage them and help them, all right? Listen, Lord willing, we'll see you in the morning. Have a great day. Bye now.